Okay, I have this uh, new programmer that I'm going to show off here on how to burn and erase your own EEPROMs. And I already have a video showcasing all that, but this is a much more reliable and newer and better improved burner than the one I was using before. This is what's known as the GQ-4X Twin USB Universal Programmer. And you can pick one of these up for about 100 bucks on eBay. Um, and it's pretty cut and dry, self-explanatory. You know, you put your chip here and lock it down like any other burner. Uh, but there are two receptacles on the side here, one's for the USB, one's for the external power. Now I like to use the external power. To use external power, it's a 6 volt, I, I'm going with the 800 milliamps, it's a 6 volt power supply that you're going to want to get. I'd say get at least 500 milliamps. And it tells you on the back how to hook up the tip. You can see here, the positive symbol is going into the middle being received by the negative, which means this is a positive tip system. The positive is going to be the, the, pro, the probe there, and the negative is going to be around the outside. That's the way this is drawn. Sometimes you'll see the negative going into the middle, which means it's a negative tip system. So when you go pick up one of these 6 amp power, I'm sorry, 6 volt power supplies, you're going to want to make sure that the way it's hooked up is that you have the center in the middle there is power, your uh, 6 volts, and then the outside is the ground. Otherwise, you'll hook the power up to here backwards and you damage your burner. But I do want to mention that because of the simple fact that if you use the USB cable only, depending on where you plug it into your computer, you may end up with some errors and, and stray voltage causing problems with your burn process. Some computer power supplies don't output a lot of power or amperage on the connections for the front of the computer. So you always want to make sure you plug the USB cable in the back of the computer to get the most power and amperage out of the USB connection. And there are some power supplies that still don't put out very much amperage. So I don't rely on just using the USB cable alone. I use the USB cable and I use the external power supply to guarantee I don't have any voltage issues with my burns. And I have yet to encounter a burn go bad in the middle of burning. So I attribute that to the power supply. So that's how I have everything hooked up in the way that I use it. Um, there's not really much to show or talk about it when you're, this indicates power, VCC, I'm sorry, on, <laughs> duh, sorry, on indicates power, VCC indicates activity, and VPP indicates that it's writing. And you'll see when I, uh, well, I'm probably not going to show the actual um, lights here when I just show the, uh, I'll go through and show you how to use the software that comes with the programmer here, but um, when you're looking at this while you're burning, on indicates power, VCC indicates activity, and VPP indicates burning. What, information is being burned to the ROM. So, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell as far as the burner. This is all it is. You know, your two connections, you put your chip there, and this tells you to make sure your uh, power supply is hooked up correctly. So, and that's about it. So I'm going to get everything hooked up and get the camera set up to, uh, well, I, actually I'm going to use the camera to record my voice, and then I'm going to actually sh use a screen capture software to show you how to use the software. So, I'm going to cut away here and come back and I'll explain how to use this and get you all set up. Alright, sorry I lied to you. I forgot to mention and talk about what the different types of chips that there are and how to tell what chip you have. Now, it's very important, obviously, that you select the correct chip that you want to write the information to in your burner software. In order for you to find out what type of chip you have, most every chip that's out there has a stamp on it telling you what the type of chip that it is. For instance, this one here I got off of a Mortal Kombat 3 and you can see there where it says M27C801-100F1 that's the that's what you want to load into your software to select this particular chip so you can write the correct information to this chip. Also on the other side of the coin here you have a Nintendo Versus ROM uh, you can see there, oh it's upside down, sorry. Now this is an Intel chip. You can see there it says D2764A. That's what you want to select to burn to this ROM. This one here, uh, I'm not sure, it may be Mitsubishi, that's what the MBM is, but you see there it says MBM27256-25. So that's, how you, that's what you want to select if you want to burn to this chip. So depending on what type of chip you have, you need to get those numbers off of there so you know which one to select in your burner software. So when I get to that point here in a second, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay guys, so here we go. 
When you install the proprietary software, you're going to get an icon that looks like this. It says launch USB program.exe. So you double click that. And it's going to load the communication between the computer and your burner. Okay, it says ready, checking new software on server, and we're ready to go. So it's going to load the last type of chip that you used previously. But just to show you how to do this here, when you first come up with the program and you don't do anything, this is what's going to look like. It'll show you over here a picture of the ROM loaded inside the burner. It'll give you an orientation, how it mounts in there, and you have your locking arm over here. So you take your ROM, you put it in there the way this shows you to put it in there, and then lock it down. You'll see here the keyway is facing towards the lock. And if you put it in upside down, it won't see it, and you'll know immediately. So that's how it shows you how to put your ROM in the burner. And the way you select which ROM you want to use is over here where it says D. You click on that for device, and it allows you to pick any ROM that's in the directory. For instance, let's say 24C00. We'll click that. You can either double click it or click it once and hit select. I'll just double click it, and it'll show you a picture of what it looks like. You see it's only got eight legs over here, it's this little tiny thing, so um, that's how you select which ROM you wish to choose. So we hit select device. For our purposes here, this ROM that I have is M27C801, so you go here where it says search device for, you type in M27C801, and there it is. So you double click that, and it reloads M27C801. You see over here in the top right, it'll tell you what ROM it, ha what it is, what you're loaded, what you have loaded, and another, again, it'll show you the way it's supposed to be loaded in the burner. So now that we have our ROM loaded, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that it's blank. So you go here where it says B, blank check, you click that. And it'll run through and verify that the chip is blank. I do want to mention while this is going on that there is a link in the video description of my previous version of showing you how to do this. In that video, I talk about how to erase the ROMs. So there's no need to go over that again because I haven't changed any of the method on how I do that. But you, I do want to mention that uh, because when you burn your, when you get ready to have your ROMs ready to erase, you want to make sure the window on the ROMs is nice and clean. You want to make sure there's no debris or, or residue or anything on the window that might prevent some of the UV light from reaching where it needs to reach to erase the ROM. So it says blank checking, and there you go. You can see right here where it says chip is blank. Now I always do this procedure twice just to make sure no errors because I have had chips register as blank and when I tried to burn them it sends me an error almost immediately because the chip actually wasn't blank. So don't let that really sway you. So even though it says chip is blank, I always do this twice. So just bear with me here. Now some chips will progress here faster than others, uh, depending on how big this is. This is an eight megabyte ROM, so it has a lot more to, space to check than a four megabyte ROM or a two megabyte ROM or things like that. So uh, you'll you'll notice when you burn these ROMs, depending on which type of ROM you have, this process will go a lot faster than other ones. So there you go. Uh, chip is blank. So now we verified that without a sh with a shadow of a doubt that the chip is blank. So the next step is to load the information that you wish to burn onto the ROM. So over here you have the little folder here. You hit open. For my desktop here I have UG12 and UJ12. We'll just pick UG12. We'll hit open. It tells you what type of file it is. You hit OK. And you can see here it loads the file. It, and you can see the code by clicking in the button here. It says code. So there's all the, the code that's going to end up getting burned. So you click back to message log if you want to. So we have our correct chip selected. We have it placed correctly in our burner. Our chip is blank. The next step is to hit the little W where it says write and click on it 
and then I'll start writing. All right, so as you can see there, I, I cut away because it took 280 seconds here to burn that ROM, and it was just dead time. So what's going to happen is, is after that, after the ROM is successfully burned, it's going to verify it automatically. It says verifying code here. What that means is, is that it's bouncing off what's on the ROM with what is in the code library here that you've loaded. In this case up here, you know, UG12. So when that's done, it'll say device is verified. So it just verified that everything on the chip corresponds to what you wanted to load onto it. But again, I always do this twice. So you go up here where it says V for verify, click on that, and here you go. Here's how you can see it where it says verifying. And so I always blank check it twice and I always verify it twice because I have burned ROMs where verify successful. I put it in there into the board and it doesn't work. And when I take it out of the board, put it back in here, we verify it fails verification. So I always do this twice. Now that doesn't happen very often. Don't let that scare you or deter you. It doesn't happen very often. It's usually it's my fault or I make a mistake, but you follow these steps that I'm showing you here, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. And again, depending on how big your your ROM is, it that dictates how fast these procedures go on. And there you go. So that's pretty much the whole thing. You don't got to worry about any of this other bull stuff over here. Um, you know, it, it, none of this stuff matters. Everything that is defaulted and selected from when you install the software will work, work just fine. You don't need to mess with speed or any of this auto mode stuff uh, or double write. Just as long as you hit device and you pick which, it'll, well, you hit device and, and, you know, you tell it which chip you have. It'll tell you how to mount it in the burner, lock the device, and you uh, load your code through the open, and you can verify that it's actually in the system by clicking the code. Then you hit uh, blank. I always blank check it twice. And then you hit the W to write it. Then you verify it again, and you're good to go. That's about it. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. There's, it's not too much detail, or it doesn't really take much to get this done. It's actually rather quite simple. That's why I like this uh, GX-4, I'm sorry, GQ-4X burner. It's a lot more user friendly. It's a lot easier to use. I don't have any, hardly any errors like I had with the previous one. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And uh, thanks for watching. And let me know if this helps you out.